In the previous section, I introduced to you the concept of communication protocols. So we're going to expand on that lecture and we're going to kick off this section talking about computer networking protocols. So when computers communicate on a network with one and another, they do so by utilizing network protocols. So for example, on the screen here, we have a couple of systems and you're going to notice here on the screen is that we have one PC over here, just like we did earlier. We'll call this PC1, and then we'll call this PC2 over here. We have one device wanting to send an email and another device wanting to send some files. Well, how do they do so? How do they send files to one and another? Well, they do so by utilizing specific protocols, specific network protocols. And as you'll see as you progress in this course, there are a lot of various different types of network protocols. There are email based protocols to allow us to send and receive emails. There are file based protocols to allow us to send and receive files. And there are a lot of other different types of protocols as well. So we use networking protocols to communicate with one and another. So when we're talking about a protocol, we can actually just simply call it a rule. And when we're talking about networking protocols, they are rules that govern how systems on a network can exchange data and also enable effective communication. Now you're gonna find out as you progress in this course that not all networking protocols are designed specifically to allow a system to communicate with another one, but there are ones that support it by doing other things on the network. They help enable effective communication. So that's what a computer networking protocol is. Now let's take this and let's put this into context with a couple of everyday examples. So for example, let's say that you need to call somebody. So you pick up your phone, you ensure there's a dial tone, and if there is, you dial their number. But if there's no dial tone and you dial the number, well, it wouldn't work. So there's a break in the protocol somewhere. So in that break in this example is there's no dial tone. So what could be the issue? Well, you'd have to find out what that issue is. Is it the phone itself? Is it the cable? Is it something with the wiring in your house? Is it that you didn't pay your phone bill? It could be anything within there that's causing that break in the protocol. Now let's take a look at another example, driving your car. So when you drive your car, you have to obey the rules of the road. Well, you don't have to, but you should. If you don't obey them, you could get a ticket, you could lose your license, you could cause an accident, you could get in an accident yourself. But if you don't, then odds are you're gonna be a lot safer in your car and you're not gonna lose your license. So when we're talking about obeying the rules of the road, we're talking about following specific protocols. So those are a couple of simple everyday examples to help you to understand that a protocol really is nothing more than a rule. So let's continue our discussion talking about networking protocols and let's go a little bit deeper. So if you remember from the last section, I said that a computer network is composed of a physical aspect and a logical aspect. So because we have a physical aspect and a logical aspect, well, we have physical protocols and we have logical protocols and guess what? These two things go hand in hand because when we put a network together, it's dependent on a variety of different protocols to allow it to work properly. If we don't have a variety of physical protocols and logical protocols, a network's not gonna operate properly. So with that said, let's talk about the difference between physical and logical protocols. So when we're talking about physical protocols, we're talking about the physical aspects. So we're talking about, for example, the medium that the network is gonna be on, so the wiring, and also the connections. So the RJ45 ports, which we use on networks, and also the signal itself. So the actual voltage level on the wire itself. So we have physical protocols that are associated with all of this. Now, when we're talking about the logical protocols, we're talking about the software and how that software controls how and when data is sent and received to and from computers supporting the physical protocols. And this is important. And I want you to understand that logical protocols support physical protocols and vice versa.
Now, like I said on the previous slide, there are a variety of different categories of protocols. You're gonna learn about a lot of them later in the course, and specifically, you're gonna learn about the TCP IP suite of protocols. And this is just a quick teaser, a quick introduction to some of the more common ones. So for web communication, when we go out onto a web browser and we communicate, we use HTTP or HTTPS. For email, we use a variety of different protocols, POP3, SMTP, and IMAP. And then for file transfers, a very common one is FTP. Now, don't worry if you don't know what any of these mean. We are gonna be spending a lot of time talking about these and I'll explain what the acronyms mean. So don't worry about the acronyms right now. So anyways, that's gonna kind of conclude this lecture. Hopefully it was beneficial. Hopefully you learned a bit more about protocols. So as we continue to talk about them throughout the course, they continue to make more and more sense. Well, I hope that you enjoyed today's video and you learned a lot from it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Now, if you're interested in taking this full course or just learning more about it, check out the video description down below because I've included a link where you can learn more about the course and enroll into it if you'd like. So again, thanks for watching my video. I appreciate it and I look forward to seeing you guys at the next video. Take care.